Welcome to another very exciting time today. Today, we're going to go into our business and of discussing the business of speaking. I'd like you to get your writing materials and take down notes. Yesterday, we started looking at 40 areas and 40 ways people can make money. We laid certain foundations. We talked about um, different kinds of speakers that we have, and then we moved on to specifics, what we can do to, to start earning. I told you my story, and then I went on to share some of the experiences I had, challenges I faced, and how I've evolved to where I am today. And I hope that you watch the YouTube, I recorded it and then uploaded it on YouTube so you can go watch it again and again. Uh, we suggested a lot of ideas. How many of you here have checked out the website about.me? About.me is a website you can upload your profile. You should do something of that nature. We also discussed about you having a digital marketing strategy. We said one of the ways to be perceived as an authority when it comes to write, um, speaking is to write a book. A book will give you access. And I also encouraged you to download the app Orai and a few others like Be Fearless, Like So. Be Fearless is of Samsung. You need to have a Samsung phone to be able to download Be Fearless. Orai is both a prim has um, free services and premium services. You can also make a lot of money from producing online courses. I uploaded a video um, that shows relationship between a speaker and the internet. I don't know if you took time to watch it. You can organize seminars and so on and so on. So let's jump. I also said something about you sending well-made proposals to organizations. We're going to zero down on that today and look at that. I also said something about always do photo shoots of all your events and put them on social media. It's very important that you update people on what you are doing. All right. So um, I also something about become a guest artist or an invited guest, um, become a guest artist or invited guest to on TV or radio, or you can also run your own radio show. Uh, you can take it to the next level. We looked at all of this yesterday. I spent some time here discussing about you having your business, your speaking business registered. Even if you are doing something else, register a company, register a business. A business name will cost you like 20,000 now or less and get something registered. Or you can evolve into getting an NGO. NGO will cost you like 200, 150,000 now to 200,000 now. It is done and it can be done. All right. And then we also said something about growing your community. All right. Uh, grow your community, build your tribe, have a WhatsApp group, Facebook group where you share your content regularly and where people can purchase your products, okay? So this is another very interesting thing you need to write down as part of the ways you can grow yourself, increase your perception as a public speaker, grow your community. You need to have a community like I do. Just follow my model, all right? Build your tribe, have a WhatsApp group where people can be around you, can get feed from your energy, feed from your content. And then you can also have a Facebook group like I do. You have a Facebook group where you share content regularly and where people can also purchase your product. If you give them value consistently, eventually they will make purchases of your product. Today we did something in class, in the, in the physical class I have. I got people to write their testimonies of how much value they have gotten from um, our experiences. And so you can collect testimonials of people. After events, every event or seminar that you give, testimonials, testimonials add to your credibility. People may pay pay because other people paid. That's interesting. People will pay when they know, people will participate, people will get involved when they know that some other persons have done same. So text and picture testimonials are good, but video testimonials are the most powerful. Text and video testimonials are good, but video testimonials are the most powerful. I like this part because it is very powerful and it says that always ask for referral after a job well done. If you do any kind of job, any speaking job, any training, and you do the fantastic job, get them to write a letter of recommendation or light, write, or not just that, not just a letter of recommendation, that's part of your testimonial, but also refer you. So if you did a good job, 
you will you will not only come back but have your host recommend it to others. If you are sure you did a fantastic job, ask for referral. Now, Brand Tracy is one who taught me so. One who taught me so. All right. So another thing that I think that will add to your perception and to get people to invest in you as a speaker is to appear corporate, to appear professional and to appear corporate. People will first see you before they hear you. This is another recommendation I give. Invest in buying a projector if you can, a laptop, you should have a laptop, and then a pointer and a presenter. This will help you. That's me speaking at my office. This will truly help you to do fantastic. This will help you to reach out to more people. Now, uh, I said something about, I said something yesterday that if you start a business, if you start, a, if you start speaking, that you can raise that speaking is a means to an end. All right, so you raise money from speaking, the art of speaking, and then you invest in other businesses. And now I've done that myself. I'm trying to conclude what we discussed yesterday. I have a printing press, that's my printing press there. I'm also involved in media. Uh, one other thing that will also help you to succeed is having a graphic designer, a studio engineer in your contact. Have a graphic designer and studio engineer in your contact. They will help you in branding and your CD production. These are very, very important steps to take. We're gonna look back at this. Uh, is it possible to get certified as a professional speaker? What are the professional speaking bodies that you can hook up to and get to look at it? All right, so you look at um, www.certifiedcoachesfederation.com. You can write these websites down and go check them out. A lot of them will get you to pay. www.publicspeakingcertification.com. If you're interested in getting certified, these are websites to go. There's also www.expatrating.com will also enable you to be a professional speaker. And the biggest of them all, the one that um, Brand Tracy, uh, um, Ubong Asian, uh, Les Brown, Jim Ron, or Blessed Henry are all involved is nsaspeaker.com. NSA is National Speakers Association. It gives you the highest award in all of the earth all of the earth for being a speaker and you can just click on that website write it down and go visit what they do you would have to do a whole lot to become certified by these organizations you can start in your local community if you are in lagos abuja ghana wherever you are google up toastmasters club google up toastmasters club that will help you know how to join you know it's also a network because you meet people who are either learning how to speak or executives, and from there you can get speaking gigs that and pay you money. And of course, one of the things that you learn, you get valuable, valuable value for in um, Toastmasters is that you're going to learn how to speak better. Toastmasters International has been there. I encourage people to join multi-level marketing companies for the reason, not for the money, but for the personal development. One of the things you notice that MLM encourages is that they do a lot of seminars, and so. If you're always looking for opportunities to speak and to develop your speaking craft, by joining a network marketing company, you would always have one seminar after the other, this and that, and then you can hone your craft. It gives you leverage. You meet people that you've never met before. You get platforms to easily speak. Unless it's your direct team, you may even charge other teams who will have you speak. I discussed that yesterday. And then um, let's get into income models for speakers, income models for speakers. And this is where you have to take down notes. One of my favorite speakers and life coach is Anthony Robbins. Anthony Robbins has really, really influenced my life. Aside other African speakers and Nigerian speakers have been a blessing to me. This man has deeply touched my life. And I encourage you to follow him. His thoughts, his ideas, his philosophy, his concept have really, really helped my life. And look at what he said about life generally and success and i think you should buy into it he says if you want to be successful in life in business in career in speaking whatever it is you're doing find someone who has achieved the results you want and copy what they do and you will achieve the same results so you know what success leaves clues anyone who has succeeded in any area of life leaves behind behind footprints all you simply have to do is copy in the exam hall when we're much younger students, they say don't copy. 
but in life you are supposed to copy you copy strategy and we say that i often tell my people i said strategy is not a thought or a plan strategy is a person strategy is not a thought or a plan strategy is a person if you model somebody you can replicate his success so you all there's something in the laws the global laws of speaking that we call the law of emulation you can observe aggressively somebody and literally copy what he's doing copy his model his strategies his, his thinking pattern his physiological pattern his thinking pattern and before long you start getting the same exact results that he's getting so what are the speaking models that you can use that what i mean speaking models venues or avenues you can make money from speaking even if you're working one well, the first one is every time you speak you get paid so you that's speak and get paid you speak at an event and you get paid for it it's a speaking model and it's a powerful model they invite you to speak at a church at a convention at a youth rally at a seminar at a conference at a summit and they pay you for that that's a speaking model you know that is however not sustainable because it's not all the time you're going to get those kind of jobs but it's it's a, it's a model it happens all right so speak and get paid model another way a better and faster way is to be the organizer of the seminar all right, so you organize, but that's how I started. Since I didn't have a, people didn't give me invites, and even when I requested for free um, speaking engagement, they still didn't give me invites. I started organizing my own seminars and I made it free. And I made sure that my seminars were how-to seminars, how-to seminars, how-to seminars means solution-driven seminars on, on business and all of that. And I paid for a hall, get a few people to work with me in the team, and then we got, filled the hall. We found a way to fill the hall. I have a lecture and a training on how to fill halls for seminars all right and when you join my coaching program i'll teach you how to fill halls you can and there's no hall when i when i did events in lagos halls you can pack up your halls just by following certain ideas and strategies all right so you can become a seminar organizer and a trainer and from i said if you're doing a free training one of the things you should do is sell back end product i remember saying that yesterday Back-end products are products like your services. You can sell your services. You can pitch and upsell your services. You can also sell products that you have books, CDs, you know, programs at the back end. So important that you think about that. Now, there, there's something called salary-based speaker. It's a speaker model. Yeah, these days, a lot of organizations are trying to cut down costs. So instead of inviting a fellow Duru Toye or I'm paying him three million, four million, or five million or Providing a judge ACN and paying one million naira. What they do is that they now employ HR um, motivational speakers and put them in the HR department. They, they they work in dual capacity, both as human resource and as the motivational speakers, more like the counselors. So every time they have any special event, they get that person from the HR or they want to train their staff. They get that person to work and it's on salary. Or alternatively, they enter an arrangement with the with a particular motivational speaker or trainer, and they enter a retainership between every month, we'll pay you X, Y, Z amount every month. In America, this is very, it's commonplace. I, I don't see it happening in Nigeria, but it's commonplace in America. So it's part of the salary. You may not be going to office every day, but every time there's an event or there's a training for staff, it keeps coming there and it's on steady salary for life. So the salary, salary based speakers are also, um, it's a speaking model. Part-time professional speaker means that you are working as a medical doctor, you're working as an engineer, yet you are certified as a speaker. So you can speak for maybe non-health related topics. If that's going to, if passion, maybe your career is health, but your passion is women, your passion is women development or entrepreneurship, it, it doesn't have to be the same with your career. Uh, but it's more exciting if it's the same with your career. Let's say you are in the health sector and you're also having this NGO or you are, you are you're going about speaking, doing professional, you know, you're a professional speaker and you're speaking on health-related matters. That's also a model of speaking. Another powerful way to grow your business and make a lot of money, I already discussed that earlier, is to join a network marketing company. First of all, you're going to hone your skills because there'll be a lot of speaking opportunities. Number two, if you're very good at speaking and if you improve at speaking, other teams will invite you and that is speaking model. You can make money, but most top speakers that I know of uh, were involved in network marketing. Jim Ron was involved in network marketing before he passed on. Les Brown is involved in network marketing. Tony Robbins is involved in network marketing. Brand Tracy is involved in network marketing. They are involved directly or indirectly in the network marketing business. They are training their own team members or they're invited to train other team members. So it's a speaking and the end from that. 
is a speaking model. There are a set of people called sponsorship brands and fundraisers. They can either be, they know how to raise sponsorship. They know how to talk and pitch to the point where um, board of trustees or partners can raise funds. It's a, it's a form. So what they do basically is that if they're going to speak at your events to help you raise funds or help you get grants or help you get funds, they would negotiate a fee with you. The fee will be based on how much they earn. They'll negotiate a percentage with you. Say, okay, if we're able to raise a million dollars or a million naira, I am going to get X, Y, Z percentage. And you agree. And you don't. a lot of church pastors do that these days, unfortunately. Some pastors will invite a, a certain prophet or certain pastor to come to church. And it's okay. They're going to raise seed. They're going to speak and inspire the people, uh, you know, and then raise seed. When you raise this seed, this is how much I want to get. So they negotiate like that. Pastors do that. In fact, pastors unconsciously use that model to be raising money for in their churches. All right, so those are these different speaking models that you can engage. You can pick any of these models and find out which one best suits you. You can do any of them, or you can do all of them, or you can do one or two of them and find out which one best suits you. Now, one of the things that will help you grow your business as a speaker is to write proposals. Even as a business person, you need to learn how to write proposals. And this teaching now I'm sharing is tailored towards helping you write pros proposals that are compelling and that will get you to get speaking engagements. All right, so where do you find resources? Where do you find um, speaking gigs or speaking engagement? It was okay, I want to speak, but where do I get it? There are several ways you can get clients that will engage you. You can get one of the fastest way to get speaking engagement for whatever subject matter is churches. Churches is um, a device, uh, diverse, diverse place where people come from all walks of life and then you can go to churches, send invitations, youth department, choir department, men's department, women's department, the church itself, and then you can get invites. You can, they can like to come speak for free and you can talk on any subject matter. Churches are a fantastic way to start. You can start with your church. Give free tips to business people, women, health tips. Don't start there. And maybe a member of the church will like what you're doing and invite you to his society, invite you to his organization, invite you. And that's how you start networking and growing. And that place you can do very well is private schools. Private schools are huge and they want to really grow their, 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 themselves. So private schools will always engage you. I've done a lot of stuff in private schools. But right now, I'm doing stuff with private, a private school, you know, training their staff. I was talking to somebody today and I said the person you can train staff. That way, you know, the person was telling me this morning that he, his emphasis and his niche is purpose. I said, that's a fantastic topic, but it's not a marketable topic. It's not a bankable topic. It's not a topic that will bring you money. It's only the motivational, even the church circles, youth development, that will suffice. But if you really want to make money, then you should be looking at solution-driven topics, value-added topics that will solve problems, give people solutions. For example, you go to a school and you're teaching, them how, teaching the teachers how to work with difficult, you know, um, children, they would be interested. Or you 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 master the Montessori model of teaching and you want to teach the teachers that, they'll be interested, they'll pay you for it. If you go to an organization and teach them, want to help their marketers to sell better and get results, they will, they will respond to you. You go to an organization and tell them that you want to solve their marketing issues and maybe get them um, sales through digital marketing, they'll respond to you. You go to organizations, big organizations, and tell them that, look, I want to solve your health, you know, stress management issues, they'll respond to you. So most organizations are interested. So private schools have their own areas of problems and you can work, work, work with them. Small business, similarly, they will be interested in marketing, in digital marketing, to solve that problem and you'll get them to work with you. Large companies want to look at organization, they want to look at customer service, they want uh, brand acculturization or acculturation, acculturization, yeah. They want people to begin to understand their values. They want even their members of staff to be immersed in their, in, their, in their values and their system and their culture. And if you can explain the culture and help these people to embrace it, to integrate into the system, you'll get a lot of success. Government parasitals are also exciting. I know somebody who actually sold public speaking for legislatures. He sent a letter to his local house of assembly. He sent a letter to his local local um, government chairman in his word in his um, state, and then in his, in his local government. And they responded. They called all the supervisors, all the councillors to come and take the courses. He didn't even got collect money initially. He just did it for them, and then sold back end. He had books. He had 
um, CDs that he was selling and he sold in hundreds of thousands of naira. And in fact, they called him every time, they've been calling him every year to refine and train people. So government pastor towels, civil servants, they would, hotels who want you to, you can go there and teach them customer service again and again to work, all right? Or records keeping, if you have knowledge in that area. NGOs too are also excited about this and, and banks. Banks, quite difficult to penetrate, but if you can have access through networking, through somebody, you get a referral, this is possible. So that's where to get clients. Clients. One of the things, one of the challenges you will have as a speaker is your pricing. Now, for a start, if you're starting as a speaker, whether you are a part-time speaker or a full-time speaker, this would be a major issue. How do I price? How do I fix the price? So for a start, you can do free. For a start, you can do free. If you do free, don't forget to sell your back-end product. Don't forget to upsell. Every time you do free, remember that free is a bait to selling your back-end product, to upsell your services. In fact, every time you do free, the, your, your message is a pitch. You're giving content and you're selling. You're giving content and you're selling you because ultimately your clothes should be a sale. You try to sell a product, the next program or your books you have or the magazines and so on and so forth. So that's basically the idea. But let's look at a few important thoughts about pricing as a speaker. And maybe this might, you can export this idea ideas into business. Now, pricing is, is important because it affects the image of you as a speaker or consultant. Now, the truth is that if you price too low, people may not consider whatever it is you're giving valuable, all right? There's certain people that want you to price them, but to price very high. And so you have to be very careful. It's a very sensitive issue. Let's look at a few quotes that will help you understand this concept, all right? The first quote is that value is not determined by those Excuse me. Value is not determined by those who set the price. Value is determined by those who choose to pay it. So write that quote down. This is by Simeon Sinek. Simeon Sinek. Value is not determined by those who set the price. Value is determined by those who choose to pay it. So if you're in this class and you're taking down notes, that is a note to share, to write. Look at what Warren Buffett says about um, value, about pricing. We're looking at some quotes on pricing. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. In the same vein, uh, you tell someone to pay X, Y, Z amount of money, the value at the end of it is what's important to him. In fact, the value is what he chooses to, the value determines how much he pays, or whether he pays, or not, he pays or not. Let's look at this other, quote by Ron Johnson. It says, pricing is actually pretty simple and straightforward. Pricing is actually a pretty simple and straightforward thing. Customers will not pay literally a penny more than the true value of the product. I already said that. Customers will only pay according to how they consider that, pro that product or that service valuable. So this is a very important concept we need to start paying attention to the way you price. And we're looking at some quotes by several people on pricing. Look at what Catherine Payne says. Catherine Payne is part of a company called News Group. He says that pricing is critical to success or critical to business. The moment you make a mistake in pricing, you are eating into your reputation or your profits. So you've got to be very careful about this. You can send the wrong message. For example, if you're invited to speak somewhere and then you, you, you price wrong, you price too low, the next time you're invited again, they will not want to pay you a higher amount of money. They will not want to pay you a higher amount of money. So you've got to understand negotiation. You've got to understand how you price. All right, this is Catherine Payne's word. Pricing is critical to business. The moment you make a mistake in pricing, you are eating into your reputation or your profit. Let's listen to what... Um, Patrick Campbell, the CEO of Price Intelligently. It's a company. Look what he says. He says that pricing is the final representation of your work. How much do you value the content you're giving? Now, let me say this to us who are speakers who, who intend to take it to the next level. Listen to me and listen to me real good. This is so important. What determines the amount of money you collect from a client is dependent on your confidence. Nothing more, nothing less. What determines how much money you collect for your speaking service or for your training service is dependent on your confidence in your ability. It's dependent on your confidence level. So if you price too low, 
it means that you don't have enough confidence in that product or in that speaking service enough to collect a high amount of money. And most of us have confidence in certain areas. For example, if you're selling something that you know that it took you so much time to master, your price is very high and you don't care how many people will show up because you have confidence that if this person learns this thing, he can make a lot of money. He can be his meal ticket to his millions. All right, so you've got to be very careful about pricing. You've got to think about pricing. Let's listen to what um, Warren Buffett says again. He said, pricing is all about customer value, all right? Price is what you pay and value is what you get. So let's go into three basic or a few basic pricing strategies you can use and speakers and entrepreneurs use. So basic price strategy. First price strategy you can use is called low price strategy. You can start with that. You can start with free and then move on to free. You can start with low price. And why do you use low price as a speaker or as an entrepreneur to get in the market? You use low price to penetrate the markets. Especially when you realize that your competitors are giving the same value you're going to give at the same uh, at a certain amount. And you know that you can come down a little on the price and still give the same value. You can use low price strategy to penetrate the market. The price, it is the, it is to price lower than your competitor, your bargain price will attract clients. So clients will look at it and say, okay, if you can promise value, the same value we'll get from Fela Durutoye at, we'll pay Fela 2 million naira, but we're going to pay you 300,000 naira or 1 million naira. You can give us the same value, we'll keep using you. In fact, people are looking for lower price, same value. So you can use that at, you know, as a strategy. You can use that to get across to a large number of mass, large number of people, because you're thinking in terms of numbers. You want to have more people in your funnel, more people in your list than, than um, the person who just focuses on high net worth people. That's also a strategy. There are people who do low price and get a lot of people and earn more money than people who just focus on high price. So, but again, you've got to be careful about the low pricing strategy. It makes people feel that you're cheap and it's not so good, all right? The second kind of price strategy is called high price strategy. Now, high price strategy is when you, you're very certain that your value you're giving is worth that amount. And then you use that, you use that to penetrate the market. You go to the market and say, look, I will give you this level of value. People will get this result if I train them. All you simply have to do is pay me this X, Y, Z amount of money. And there are certain clients that do not pay cheap. They want to pay high. And sometimes they pay high and don't get as much value. So if you can present such value to them and they are paying high, good for you. All right. So when you're paying, when you're focusing on high price strategy, you must think in terms of profitability. All right. You must also think in terms of, you must be realistic. All right. You must also think in terms of positioning. What's your position in the market? You know, in, in that niche area, what's the position? You must also think in terms of the competition. What's the competition also selling? And how much are they pricing? You must also think in terms of the demand. Is there a demand for the service, this service? All right. You must also think in terms of quality. This product you're selling now, this speaking, this is it quality. You must also think in terms of the market. Is there a ready market, the cost, before you now pick your pricing? All right. So pipe. Now, I want to show you two people, two speakers who use pricing as a strategy, high pricing as a strategy. They may not be everywhere, but every time they speak, they make the money for a year. They make money for a year. While we are looking for 300,000, 300,000 to make 3 million in one year, these speakers and trainers, they do 20 million two times or three times in a year. 20 million, 20 million, 20 million. That's 60 million in a year. And they did, and they, they do less work, all right, because of the high pricing. And the first person I like to talk about is Leke Alda. I need to write his name down. Write down his name and Google him up. Well, Leke Alda is Nigeria's number one brand consultant. He's massive. He's one that designed. He does a lot of stuff for GT Bank, all right. He does a lot of branding consulting for GT Bank. He's the one that actually made the concept branding very popular in Nigeria. An amazing guy. He did stuff for Mirinda, and he has done a lot for organizations. The name of his company is called Lake Alda Consulting. He's a massive guy. He's a lawyer. He's a painter. He's a photographer. He's many. He's a. He's, a, he's called. He calls himself a polymath, multi-talented, homo homo sapiens universally. Lake Alda, you need to follow him. Amazing guy. He does also does a lot of top of relationships. So Lake Alda is a guy to follow. How does he get himself to get high net worth clients that pay him? Same thing with Fela Drotoy. We all know Fela. Fela actually contested for uh, presidency in 2019. This guy 
earns huge. The difference between the regular guy and the guys who get high net worth clients to pay them is branding. The difference between you as a speaker and the person who gets people to pay them high is branding. The person who is getting more paid, you know, between me and you, is just branding. Between you, you may have more content than I do have. You may even be able to deliver the content better than me, but the difference between me and you could be, and most likely is branding. Why I'm getting the high amount of money I'm getting because I've been able to successfully brand myself. Now, so for you to get people to pay you high, you need to start thinking in terms of branding. Start now that you are growing. Become more conscious of branding yourself because by branding yourself, you add so much value. You, you eventually add, you get people begin to perceive you as big and huge and you make money. So let me look at that. I want us to take a time to look at these two cups. Branding can make a huge difference in pricing. The first cup is a coffee and it is just normal. It is not, the cup doesn't have any brand and you can get it in America for less than a dollar less than a dollar or maybe at most a dollar get a coffee from any coffee shop any any fast food just get, that is not branded but just the other one the other picture there is a picture of a cup that has coffee but the difference is that there's a particular logo and that logo is starbucks i want to type down write down s-t-a-r-b-u-c-k-s starbucks is the biggest coffee franchise in america now the same coffee the same content but because of a brand, the first one is sold at $1 or less than a dollar. The second one is sold at $5. That is 500% difference. So you can have 500% difference. You can leverage, you can earn more because you brand. So as a speaker, you have to start thinking of your brand. And I'm going to teach you that maybe one of these days, um, the importance of branding. Now, one of the things that we teach in branding is that your choice of name, your choice of name the name that you choose, all right? So you don't want to start choosing a very long tongue twisting name, all right, unless it's deliberate, unless it's very deliberate, but you want to begin to focus on names that will catch people's minds, that will be memorable, that will be sassy, choice of names. And if your company name or your name is too long, you abbreviate it. Like instead of Yahoo, instead of yet another hierarchical officials oracle, they call it Yahoo. Instead of cable news network, they call it CNN. Instead of um, uh, MTN, what's, what's the full name? Something, something more telecommunications network, they call it MTN. So people, when you have, when instead of Nigerian Television Authority, they call it NTA. So you, sometimes when you have a long name for your company or a long name, you can abbreviate it. You can abbreviate it. And go sell inside, go to the toilet, toilet. You, if you're just joining us, I'd like you to mute your sound. The woman just spoke, who does talk about toilet, please mm. mute your sound. Thank you and welcome. All right. Just mute your sound in the Zoom class. Thank you. All right, so brand is so important. Now, I want you to, so the first thing we pay attention to, please, if you're just joining us, mute your sound. If you're just joining us and you're in class, mute your sound. All right, thank you. All right, so so branding can make a difference in your pricing strategy. Tactic in terms of brand. I want to, I want to show you some products that, that 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 really use branding all right so uh someone said that um um that branding is what makes is what makes popcorn eh? high sell higher than google and Epa. the same i don't know if you know google is it google is that what they call it is it google whatever they call it all that locally made popcorn that they do and put into nylon with granuts all right, corn, roasted corn, and then packaged popcorn. It's just branding, it's just packaging. So, so aside the name that you must make memorable, the next thing you want to think about is your packaging. And then you want to think about being the first in the minds of people, being the first in the, because brand is about perception in the minds of people. Let's look at a picture here. Omo was the first detergent, which one was the second? Can you think of the second they tried it. it was the first detergent in Nigeria and maybe in Africa. I don't know about Africa, but I know in Nigeria, the, the first detergent in a blue color was Omo. Which one was the second? You really can't think about it. You might start thinking of elephant. You strain your mind thinking of other um, stuff. In fact, it's gotten to the point where um, people will say things like, oh, go and buy me Omo. Someone says, which kind of Omo? I don't know if it happens to you. Okay, or let's look at the second one. Indomie, Indomie was the first noodle which was the second in Nigeria, particularly. I don't know about Ghana, I don't know about Kenya, but I know in Nigeria, Indomie was the first noodle. Which one was the second? 
you can think of it. Of course, there are many other brands, but the first is usually considered at the best. So when you're going to any industry in speaking, find out where can you be first? Where can you be first? Because the first is usually considered the best. The first is usually en engaged more often than none. So Indomie was, people say, like my parent, my, my people will say, oh, um, I want to buy Indomie. The, the seller, the retailer will say, which Indomie? Is it Tommy? Is it Mimi? Is it Chiki? You know, which one do you want? Because the, the first is now generic, it's now like the name of that industry. So you've got to be very careful. This is a very important concept. Same thing with Maggi, Maggi Cube. Maggi was the first seasoning cube. Which one is the second? You can't remember. Meanwhile, we had Ajinomoto, we have um, uh, Noki, we have many others. So which was the second? We can't think of any other one. So think of an, an, a niche. Think of an, a niche is your area of expertise where you can be first. Where can you be first at? And I'm going to go specifically into that. Where did I get these ideas from? I got it from this book titled The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding. Now, I want you to, it was written in 1992, uh, fantastic book. So Google it up. I think it's on Amazon. You can buy it or you can look for it in any bookshop and get it with the 22 immutable laws of branding. Remember, branding will raise your value up. It will help you in business. Branding will also lift you up higher than your contemporaries. You've got to be very careful about it. It's called, they call it the law of the first. The law of the first, the first mention. The law of the first is very, very powerful. And to give you, so if, when I came into my city, I became the first person, the first motivational speaker on TV, the first motivational speaker on radio, in my community, the first motivational speaker to do a billboard. Think of where you can be first. Okay, think of where you can be first. The first public speaker to discuss health related issues. You know, just think in that area or find. Okay, <laughs> What if, what if you cannot be first? Please, if you're just joining the group, mute your mic. If you're just coming in, I'd like you to mute your mic. Thank you. If you're just coming into the group, into the Zoom class, I'd like you to mute your mic. Thank you. Now, what if you have you've gotten into a category or to a niche and everywhere they are already leaders, we call them market leaders. What do you do? You create a category. It's called the law of category. Let me give you an example in my industry. Now, when you go to, when you think of public speaking, you think of so many giants in, in, in Nigeria. Let me talk about Nigeria because that's my constituency in Nigeria. You think of some people who teach and train public speaking. If you're just joining us, please mute your mic. If you just came in now and you've not muted your mic, mute your mic. Thank you. All right. So you think of chatting people in that industry, but in public speaking, you have diction and grammar. If you just came in, please mute your mic. If you just came in, there's somebody who's rattling stuff. If you just came in, mute your mic. There's somebody whose background is, at, is encroaching. If you just came in, check that your mic is mute. So there's something, there's somebody whose mic is on. Please mute your mic or we'll have to remove you. Check that your mic is mute. So what you do basically is look out for how to create a new category. Let me explain that to you. There's somebody whose mic who's on, please mute your mic. Let's look at these two brands. There's somebody whose mic who's on, that's on. Check that your mic is mute. I will remove you now. We have two brands, Omo and Clean. Omo was a market leader. There's somebody whose mic is on, please mute your mic or we'll get to remove you. We have two brands, Omo and Clean. Omo was a market leader. Omo focused a lot on blue detergent. They dominated the blue detergent markets and they succeeded in that region. So does somebody's mic who's on, that's on, please mute your mic. Excuse me, let me move the person. Okay. 
Sorry about that. So let's look at um, so the the blue determinant. So what did clean? How did clean penetrate the market? How did clean penetrate the market? They did something very simple. They entered the market by creating another category. They formed that the target became white, and their focus was on stain removal. Their emphasis was, look, we remove stains, and our brand color, our color is white. So that's how they used they used the white strategy. And then beyond that, they also applied something that Cowbell did many years ago. They came up with such a um, detergents. By having such a detergents, they they made they used low pricing strategy and penetrated the common persons so that everybody could get clean. It was white, it was such a, and it was low price. And they got a huge chunk of the market from Omo, from Omo. Omo was like, uh, we're looking at people paying X, Y, Z amount. Now these guys have penetrated the market. They're using white. They created another category. And it, it forced Omo to also form Sache and to also have white, a white version of their own brand. So you see how somebody can use um, pricing and use branding and enter, use the law of category to penetrate the market. So think, you've got to start thinking as a speaker. If you come, like when I came to the public speaking industry, I realized that the best way to penetrate that industry is to come from the angle of persuasion. So our focus is not on diction and grammar. We, we, we do that, our focus is on persuasion as it relates to business, as it relates to sales. So think, if you're going to the finance market, the finance market or the finance market has sub niches. It has um, bookkeeping. If you're an accountant and you're a bookkeeper, you can create an educational program around there. You can help small businesses to, put their books together. A lot of small businesses don't know how to put their books together. So you can work with that. You can do um, bookkeeping. You can do account. You can sell accounting software. You can help them create simple accounting software for small businesses. All right. You can also think, even you can think of marketing, customer service, or you can think of many, many things you can think of just from finance. All right. You can do that. Let's look at another industry. Leadership is also very broad. Leadership is very, very broad. You can think of um, personal leadership. You can look at corporate leadership. We can look at spiritual leadership. There are many angles you can come from, sub niches, and then dominate that space. Let's look at even network marketing. Network marketing in that area, you can be a, a, a you can teach them prospects. You can focus on being recruiting machine. That's your strengths. That's your category. That's your niche. You can look at follow up. You can just be the follow up guru. All right. You can look at um, uh, public speaking, pitching, and presenting. That's your area of strengths, all right? You can look at team building, how to build teams. That becomes your area of emphasis, even though you're in the network marketing industry. You've got to look at sub niches of the niche you're involved in. Even schooling, whatever it is, health, the health sector, look at sub niches. Start thinking in terms of sub niches. That's your category that you can now become first and become the best. Does it make sense to you? So the question I want to ask you is, when people think of you, what comes to mind? When they think of George Asian, what comes to mind? When they think of your name, what comes to mind? When they think of John, they think the Baptist. When they think of um, George Asian, they think the motivational speaker. All right, doesn't mean that you, you don't do other things, but there is a perception people want to have of you. All right, so what is that? And start building your brand, because when you build your brand and you take your time to do it, you are going to eventually price high. People will price you. People want to have the experience of you and pay you heavily for it. Don't take what I've just taught you lightly. Start building your brand. It begins with your Facebook account. All that Y, um, instead of Y-O-U, you put U. All that, F, instead of putting F-O-R, you put four. All that um, skimpy dresses you put online, it's going to affect your perception and your brand. Go back and rework your Facebook page, your Facebook account, and start making sure that you deliberately create a perception 
of the kind of person you want them to do from your your who you are you're about you everything about you down to your whatsapp your whatsapp status your instagram page you are deliberately creating the perception you want to have you it's going to start forming a brand the next one of these days they are going to engage you and they'll pay you based on how they perceive you people will pay you based on how they perceive you your value is dependent on their perception of you so you've got to be careful so with that high price let's go to another kind of pricing it's called client price adjustment i do that a lot all right now even though you do low pricing you can also do high price you can create products that are low prices i do that i also have products that are high prices i do that all right actually coaching programs coaching programs are one-on-one -on -one. there are people that like one-on-one -on -one. even if it's virtual i have people who pay me up as much as hundred thousand two hundred thousand for one-on-one -on -one. they meet me regularly video calls we have conversations we discuss their issues that's a form of coaching that's a form of training and that's a form of speaking all right so so but there's some, there's something called client price adjustment this is when you meet with your i mean some speakers charge different amounts to different clients depending on who they are and how big they are so i teach public speaking to certain people at 50k i'm teaching another, i'm teaching the same thing at 1 million to another set of people because of their their clientele base or their how they feel that this how they feel the pricing should be so it's called client price adjustment it's a form of pricing strategy the picture i have there is an oil company now oil companies pay me heavily but because i have a relationship with the lady that is there standing she's the ceo we discussed the price i had to come down on the price and because they had this returnership arrangement with me they're going to have me speak severally and there's even a time even more recently there's a company that i'm working with and they're taking me they're towing me around nigeria and they are paying me, they're supposed to pay me XYZ amount in the hundreds of thousands, but they pay me far less because I turn me around the 36 states of Nigeria. So I adjusted because it's like a client price adjustment. All right. So there's also something called the industry pricing. Industry price means the standard price. There's a standard price. And when you get into the speaking industry, you're not the standard price. You can't go and start charging anyhow, charging 2,000 or 10,000 naira. Just because you're hungry or because you want to speak. You no, know, you've got to be careful. You rather, it's better even do it for free. It's even better you go and speak for free than to price wrong. Because when you price wrong, you give people a wrong perception about the industry and people will start pricing other speakers low. So sometimes when you when I say when you pay me this amount of money, if you pay me this amount of money, I'm going next time you want to invite somebody, I'm going to start pricing. You will you in fair, you say, ah, we gave George here this amount of money and he took it. So you've got to be careful about that it's, it, it doesn't only surprise not only affect you as an individual it also affects your industry so you rather also okay, i'll do it for free and then give me honorarium but if you're going to pay me my professional fee this is your price this is the standard price and this is how much you got to pay me all right so that's a better way to go about it so um now it's very important you pay attention to this don't go and mess up the speaking industry you're not only going to affect it's not only going to affect it's going to affect other people all right, so let's go right now into proposals, proposal writing. Now, I told you when I started speaking, I used to write a lot of proposals. I want to teach you what to do. Just basic ideas on what to do when you write proposals, okay? I used to write a lot of proposals and drop in companies out there, send DHL them, FedEx them, and I'll get replies. But I did a lot of letters and I got maybe out of the 100 letters I sent or 200 letters I sent, I'm gonna get 10. And that's like a 10% or 5% conversion, that's great. But send emails to little organizations, it didn't work for me. It wasn't working as I want. Because when you pay attention, this is good. When you send a letter to a proposal to somebody, and then they see the price and they look at your price, look at the financials, they will now, they are not, they have the advantage because you are requesting for them to give you audience and for them to have you um, train their staff. They still don't have sense values. So in the conversation that will ensue, the calls, they will, they will have the stronger edge because you went to meet them. All right, you went to meet them. So that's always an issue. Negotiating might become, then end, they end up winning by telling you, this is how much we can afford to pay. These are budgets for XYZ training, if we're gonna take you and use you. By the way, you have other competitors. But if you are positioned, pay attention now, if you are positioned strategically by the things I've been sharing, such that they saw you and contacted you, you determine the price. You didn't get that. If you send proposals to them, they have the upper edge in the negotiating table. But if you are positioned strategically by things I share, by being very present on Google, in Google, by having your YouTube channel, 
by putting up content on your blogs, by having your, your Facebook account arranged well, by having a Facebook page, by having a Facebook, your positions there, people, they, your perception people have of you is strong there and they located you on Facebook or they located you on Google, you will determine the price. You will determine the price. So, but if you're going to start and get across, how do you increase your chance of succeeding as a speaker by writing proposals? Now, I like to say this. After interviews, now don't write a proposal to an organization. I learned that later. Don't write a proposal to an organization that you have not first had an interview with them. So this is how it works. Find a way to go to the organization, all right, and have a meeting with the HR, or if you can't have a meeting with the CEO. Tell them what to pitch what you want to do by committee. They, 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 after the conversation, they will ask you for, do you have a proposal? So you say, okay, I'm going to go write a proposal. Don't give them at that time. I'm going to go write a proposal based on what we have just discussed. You didn't get that. So don't go. It's, I learned that as I grew up in the speaking industry. I don't just present, assume, maybe I do some research and assume that this is their problem. I find a way to have a meeting with the CEO. If I do have a meeting with the CEO or the person who has the strongest, but who can make it by the, the decision, and I have a comment, I would like to know, I'll probe, I'll ask questions and I'll get information. I'll tell, okay, then that's okay, we're good. We like it. Let's have your proposal. It's okay. I will go back based on what we've discussed and put together a proposal and include all the things that we shared from the conversation we've had. Does it make sense to you? All right. So why have a written proposal? Why is written proposal necessary after you have that conversation? The first reason is because when you write a proposal, it finalizes the agreement. Once they receive the proposal, it just shows that this agreement we had, there's an agreement between you and the person. Don't use word of, word of mouth is not strong enough as a proposal. A proposal must be legal. It must be written. Number two, a proposal document, in a proposal, it also documents all that you're going to do. So you spell out the description. So they don't tell you, they don't say, ah, you said you're going to do this. It's written out there what we're going to do there in the proposal. Number three, a proposal that documents the time frame of your performance. They don't tell you to continue to train after you've finished your time frame, whether it's two days, three days, one week, or every week. There's a training I did for a company for four days, four days in four weeks. So I, I went there four times. I went to Port Harcourt, for, it was another company. I went there four times and I was paid a certain amount of money. So it, it was documented in the, in the, in the proposal. Number four, the proposal documents what you're going to receive for your speaking fees. It's very important that it's clearly written based on what you've agreed. Maybe they, maybe it, it became this pricing strategy was um, the clients was something that had to do with them. You negotiating and then you came to an agreement. Make sure that it's put there on paper. It's legal because you can take them to court and they can take you to court. It's a service you're rendering. All right. And like I said to you, these ideas I'm sharing with you can be cross fertilized. You can use them in other industries, even for your businesses. Is, I believe so much in cross fertilization of ideas. You can export ideas from what I'm sharing now to any other business you're doing. The next, the last thing is that proposal forms the basis of a contract. It forms the basis that there's a contract between you and them. So don't write a proposal until you've had a conversation and interview. And then after that, you go make a proposal based on what you guys have had a conversation with. Did this make sense to you? All right. Now, what basically, when you're writing the proposal, these are a few things that you need to, need to be in place. Use a professional but friendly style in your approach to writing. Don't now this is again, this is emphasized again. Don't add what you didn't discuss. Don't add what you didn't, don't add what you make sure that you discussed all the details and then you add that in the proposal that you're going to share. And then number three, this is very important, double check before you send. Double check that you have not added anything, you have not added the price, you're putting everything very clearly. And then this is so 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 vital that you double check, especially for a typographical errors. You may write it very well, and then you give it to your secretary or give it to some typist, and the person messes up the whole thing for you. By um, Some people can, be, can pay attention to a lot of details, all right? So be very careful about it. The financial should be clearly written. Everything should be done. You've done it again and again before you submit. So let me give you, basically, every, every proposal should have, every proposal should have a cover letter. Every proposal should have a cover letter. A cover letter basically summarizes everything in very few words that you're going to offer to them, the value you're going to add to that organization that you're going to train, 
or to speak, whether it's a school, a church, whatever it is, that's that what you have. that cover letter should be attached to, to part of your proposal. And this is how the letter should be. The letter should have an opening, right? The next thing is the background. The background what's people call the executive summary. All right. The background basically is restate the situation and issue. And your restating the situation and issue is those things that you and the person discussed. All right. That's the next. The next thing is objectives. The objectives basically state the objectives of the engagement precisely. Describe exactly what your client will learn or receive as a result of your work. You have to spell out what they're going to benefit based on the background, based on the situation and the issue. That is the, the third thing. The fourth thing that your letter should have is study methods. What strategy are they going to use? Zoom? Are they going? What channels are you using? And how are they? What is it? Facilitation methodology? Is it a facilitation method they're going to use, or is it presentation style? What methods are you going to use? Spell it out briefly in that letter, and then quickly add a summary of the cost of cost and payment information. Now, this will also be broke down, broken down broken down in your proposal. Now, I believe, pay attention, this is very important, that a proposal is more effective when it's graphical. So your letter should summarize everything, your cover letter, like summarize the whole, the whole, um, the whole projects. Then the next thing that should be there, now in fact, your cover page should be something like this. You see how graphical this, this is service proposal right now. So um, prepared for, put the full name and all that. You can edit the service proposal and put the topic, the bold bully. Let's get work with a graphic designer. Work with a graphics designer to help you make sure your proposal is right. Now that's the first cover. After the first cover, the next thing that you're going to have is for me, after the, the first cover, it's very graphical. The next thing that will be there will be my cover letter. The cover letter will be on the letterhead. That's why the letterhead should be your company, your brand name. That's why I say you need to register a company. The next thing is this one, where you have the proposal put a summary of like a content of it. Should be also graphical. And then on and on and on, all you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. Now, let me give you some websites you can easily check out. You can easily check out. And when you check this website, they'll help you structure your proposal. So you can visit proposable.com, www.proposable.com. This will help you, guide you, through the process of proposal writing. Also give you templates on different proposal writing. One of the beautiful things about Google is that if you have any issues, just Google. Google can even give you a template. You download the template and then work with it. Work on the content. The content is your job to do. And beyond that, you can also get a graphic designer to graphically represent the few of the words. Again, I told you the, the, um, the, the cover letter should have all that you want to do then the rest of the proposal should be graphically represented, driven with pictures and colors. Um, one of the persons that helped me write, let, taught me proposal writing was Peladro Toyo. You see Peladro Toyo's proposals. If, if it lands on your table, you will look at it. If it lands on your table, you look at it. Uh, one of those days, my wife was looking for a job many years ago, and I, and I told her, I said, you know, when we are writing their CV, everybody does write writes their CV, very funny stuff, people abound, you know, all that kind of thing. And I told her, I said, look, a lot of people are doing this thing, this thing. Why don't you do something different? So I got a graphic designer to design, instead of putting, uh, having just a bland, uh, the first CV had her picture, a very well taken corporate picture. Sha, she was looking very corporate right there in the front picture. And I, I put the front, it was the curriculum vote of. Imo, George, ACN. Then she now had a picture. Then under the picture, it now had, I wish I could show you that picture. I, I don't have it somewhere here. Then after it, she now had her blog. Imagine that. The blog was created. I thought I, we created the blog together. I was, we used the free blog, wordpress.com. I was use blogs.com. Imo, And then if you click on the blog, it contains her CV. It contains everything you're going to see. All right, her blog and her phone number. That was the first. Thing. The next page that contained the other regular things, and it was graphically done, such that it was appealing to the eye. So when others placed their own CV on the table, and she placed hers, the interviewers picked hers and said, "Who is this guy that has 
this lady that has done something graphical, they looked at it, they called her, interviewed her, and she was also good, and she got the job. Just by doing something different. Does it make sense to you? All right. So better proposal that IO is also good. Now, that's basically what I'm going to teach you today. I hope you got some value. But here's the thing. These books can help you to improve yourself as a speaker. Now, remember, there is the art of speaking, which I can teach you. The technicalities of speaking, how you can become better as a speaker, all right? There's a, that, that is so important. It's a, it's a must have as a speaker. You need to fine tune your skills. But there's also the business of it, which I'm teaching you now. You must understand it, else you'll be a very good speaker, but a poor one at that. But if you're a good speaker and you understand business, so you understand selling, you understand packaging, you understand branding, you understand how to price, how to get things. You will get, it may not even be as good as others, but because you understand the business, you will be making a lot of money, even if you're doing it part-time. So you must understand these things I'm sharing with you and use it. Now, a few books I want to recommend that you get and start reading. Now, I told some people today, earlier today in a WhatsApp class, I said, look, you might think these ideas are not good for you. Why don't you just pay attention to it and take down some notes? Let your mind stretch a little bit. Let it stretch a little bit. You just never can see. Interestingly, any new idea you get will expand your mind and it will never return back to you to the original dimension. You've just learned something new, become broader in thinking. You start understanding that, wow, they're speaking and they're speaking business. There's the art of speaking, there's the business of speaking. There's also the technology of speaking. There's using Zoom, using Facebook, selling courses. There's the monetization of the products of the speaker so that the speaker also makes money from selling his products, his intellectual property. He can start getting royalties. He can start getting residual income on a massive scale like I do without speaking. He has spoken once on a video and the videos are selling. Spoken once on an audio, the audios are selling. Spoken, written once on an ebook and the ebooks are selling. He has done one course. He has created a course and has uploaded it on Okada Books or on Coursera.com, write it down, C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A, Coursera.com. You create a course, upload it there, and then people buy it and they pay you money. Or you go to Udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y. You create courses using um, what I'm using now, PowerPoint, or, or you can go to um, SlideShare, S-L-I-D-E-S-H-A-R-E, Slides, SlideShare. You create a slide that has content like I've done, and then you upload it there. You can give some for free, so people can see the value. You can you pay some with premium, and they pay. Slide share, Udemy.com, Coursera.com. These are websites. There's also Teachable. Teachable.com. Teachable.com is also a website that if you can teach any course, anything at all, you can teach it, upload it there, and then people, people will pay it, pay for you, pay for it. So you start having streams of income from your intellectual property. So that even when you are not strong, enough to do anything, you're not working there, you're still earning. And that's a different dimension. That's understanding the channels, the platforms, and the technology of your business. So there is the art of speaking. There is the business of speaking. There is also the technology of speaking. These things require knowledge. These things require skill. These things require guidance. You need someone to coach and help you. And that's what I'm saying. That if you're interested, let me help you out. So we already joined part of it. We have like three people who made um, commitments in the last two days. Tomorrow is the final day, and I'm going to be closing that offer. It's not going to be that low anymore. It's going to be higher. So ten thousand. Get involved. Get to understand the art of speaking, which is vital to your success. Then understand the business of it. Understand the business of it, and then understand the technology. So, what books have, have helped me, and what books can help you? You must be a reader of books because the speaker is a reader. You must know things. You must know things. So, what are the books I recommend? If you want to make it big as a consultant, if you really want to make it big as a consultant, go here and buy from William A. Cohen. I have that book in my office, massive book. It shares a lot of ideas and much more. How to make it big as a consultant. Go to your bookshop, look for it, Google it up, search for it on any, any platform, check whether you have it on Jumia or any of this, um, or Amazon, and then order for it and get the book. It will really help you. It's something that you should keep. You can't read it from the beginning to the end. It's actually big, voluminous, but you can be reading part of it, underlining and getting ideas because everybody is a consultant in a certain area. There's an area of your life that you can consult for others. You can train, you can speak. And I've told you that the future of enterprise is teaching. Every business has an education part. If, you're, if you, for example, you can make money from free cryptocurrency, you can also teach cryptocurrency. 
the money, 20% of the money made from cryptocurrency is education. You didn't know that. There's the, a, there's the business part of network marketing. There's the education of network marketing. So you can start exploiting knowledge, skills, expertise. You can start making money from knowledge. And that is being intelligent as a speaker. Another book that you want to also get is The Psychology of Selling by Brand Tracy. It will really help you because you see, as a speaker who wants to earn money, you need to understand selling. The number one skill that the entrepreneur needs to have is selling. I have, a, I have an audio that is a must listen to. It's 2,500 naira. I'm not going to get it less, less than that. I can't sell it for 5,000, but I'll sell it for 2,500. Get the audio. If you don't get value from it, return. Tell me to send back, send you back your money. I'll leave the audio and I'll leave the money with you. It is so powerful. It talks about how to sell anything to anyone. A lot of the ideas I got it from um, Brand Tracy and a few other, other people to teach you the process of selling. And you need to sell. Nothing succeeds until somebody sells. There's no cash without selling. Anytime you don't have money, you're not selling. You need to understand the dynamics of selling. Sell, sell, sell your knowledge, sell your expertise. Let everything around you, anything that's working around you be sellable. That's how to grow and succeed in this business. So that's another book I recommend. Then this is the classic. Sell like crazy. That's like the current, I, I had to do a review of the book. And I told, uh, I said to Sabri, which he responded to me. I told you something, okay, yesterday, or oh, yesterday, I remember yesterday that I you know, was it yesterday? I commented, was it yesterday? I commented, no, not yesterday, a few days ago. I commented on Sabri Subi's um, posts, one of those posts. I think one of training the coach people, the coach B people. And I commented, and I said he was going to respond to me. And he did respond to me. And he sent me a link telling me, go and review, write something about the book, which I did today. I went and did today. Actually, without mincing words, mincing words this book is the most powerful book on digital marketing I've read in recent times. So like crazy, massive book. I ordered it, I ordered it from, from Australia. Get it, get it. It will help you. How to get many clients, customers and sales as you can possibly. It will help you in, if you want to understand and master digital marketing. I mean, it's a massive book. I refer to it every now and then. I've underlined it again, and I've read it like two, three times, and I'm hoping to read it more. And the beautiful thing about this book is that I'm applying it. Applying it. Now, the last book I want to share with you is this one. Now, this is also in this case. Why I'm so passionate about advanced selling strategies by Brian Tracy, because when I started to teach, to, to be a speaker, and to teach sales, this is the book I first read. I first read... The Proven System of Sales Ideas, Methods, and Techniques Used by Top Sales People Everywhere, Advanced Selling Strategies by Brian Tracy. I first read that book before I read Psychology of Sales. Now, this book eh, is more voluminous and has more content than the Psychology of Sales. Trust me, you cannot be in business and not understand sales and not be passionate about sales and not be following sales gurus like Grant Cardone like Tom, Tom Hopkins, like Brian Tracy, you must be following them. These are speakers that focus on sales. They will not only help you to improve your business and whatever it is you're doing, they also help you to improve yourself as a speaker and making money as a speaker. So this book really turned my life. I have lots of content from this advanced. These are the four books I recommend. There are many other books. Of course, there are books on the art of speaking, which I've not recommended. You have not shared here. I will do that some other time. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. The first thing I'm going to do tomorrow, our last meeting, is I'll just share some books that you can get anywhere you are. If you don't want me to coach you, you can get those books and they will help you. But you see, the difference between books and a teacher is that the, the teacher helps books to come alive. The teacher is a living example. Epitoma is a living knowledge. Epitomizes knowledge. Literally shows you what is an is example of what you're reading. And so that's why the Chinese world says that a conversation across the table with a wise man or a mentor is what more than a month study of books. So study a book for one month. A mentor will teach you that in one hour. But it's even less than that, showing you in his, a conversation with him or just having, just looking at his life for observation, you can see what you've read in one month. And that's why I encourage you that you need teachers. Teachers translate information to knowledge. Knowledge from these books will help you, but you need a teacher to literally dot the I's and cross the T's. And that's why you need a coaching experience, a coaching experience to guide you not in just in the art, in the business and the technology. This is so important. These are the books that will help you in case you don't want to work with me. And all right, so what I'm giving a three months public speaking packet just for the art, technology and the business. And I'm doing it at a ridiculous amount of 10,000. I'm going to guide you through process, share your ideas, share your materials, 
have several Zoom meetings with you that will help you. So if you are interested in being part of it, today, tomorrow is the last day by 4 p.m. I've been studying from 12 by to 4 p.m. 4 p.m. is the last time when I'm going to increase the price. If you reach out to me subsequently, I would have to increase the price. You see, when you really want something as a, as a person, even if you don't have the resources, there's a way you can reach out to people and say, look, I need to get this thing. I enter a deal with me. Negotiate. That's basically what. Negotiate with me and then get, get an installment of uh, a payment by installment. And that's fine, you know, because you really desire to do that. But if you just stay back, oh, I don't have money, and then you let it go, you never had an opportunity again. I often tell my students, I say, look, you guys take as much value as you can get with the price you're paid. Because the time will come, you will have access to some other training, and then you're like, wow, I got so much value from what the recent thought. And whatever these guys are teaching me is a far cry. And look at how much I'm having to pay. All right, so take advantage of the offers, and you will make um, a lot of sense. So thank you guys for showing up today. I really appreciate your coming. God bless you. I'll take some questions and then we'll call it a quit for today.